When we're creating characters for video games, it can be tempting to simply make the best characters we can make. That sounds like the right way to do it, right? But the problem is, we need an ensemble. An ensemble is a tool. It's a pack of characters that we can apply to get different flavors for our story. It's not just a random group of people. So it doesn't really matter how good your characters are if they can't be part of an ensemble. We need to make sure that all the characters we put into our ensemble are useful tools. So how do we do that? How do we consider that? How do we form that? Well, we can start with the basic constraints. The first constraint is that every character needs to be similar. Now this might sound a little bit strange, but all of these characters have to be able to show up in places that are going to happen in the game. They have to show up to events that are going to occur. So they all have to be able to participate in those events. If they can't participate in the events that are going to happen in the game, then we can't use them. So they have to be structurally similar enough that they can show up in the game in a meaningful way. The other thing we need is for them to be distinct. They show up to these things, but they need to have their own distinct flavor as they move through that thing. You can see how this might be a little bit of a challenge. We need a block of characters that can show up to these events, but we also need them to be able to have their own distinct take on those events. Let me give you an example. It's an RPG, and you're playing Hero Man Mikiro. There's your sword, and there's your shield. And uh, your party member is, of course, a member of the ensemble. You are going to run into a lot of things over the course of your adventure, so think of some of the things that your player is going to run into. How about an ancient ruined castle on top of a mountain with fog pouring down out of it? Strange purple fog, right? It doesn't have to be anything specific. It's not a specific thing that you've already written plot for. It's just an example of the sorts of things you might encounter on a journey. Any member of the ensemble that can join your party needs to be able to interact with this situation in their own distinct way, and that should be on every axis that the character exists. If the character has a personality, their personality needs to have something to say about this castle, something unique and distinct and flavorful. If they have stats, their stats need to apply to this castle in a new and distinct way. If they have a visual appearance, their visual appearance need to contrast with the visual appearance of the castle in their own distinct way. If the character exists on any axis, in any way, they need to, to exist in a distinct way that can be applied to wherever they're planning on showing up in the game. This is quite a challenge, and it gets significantly worse because not every member of every ensemble is a party member. For example, let's say that you're making a vampire game where the player plays a vampire, and they're mostly doing things solo because vampires run solo, you know. But you still want to have ensembles of other vampires, right? So how do they fit into this story? What sort of situations will these vampires show up to? You need to understand how you're going to use these secondary characters, these ensemble characters. Maybe they show up as other interested parties or as rivals. So you have to think about the sort of situations where this sort of thing might happen and these characters might show up. How about there's been a grisly murder and uh, you're showing up to make sure that you know you clean up and there's no normies that are going to find out that vampires exist or whatever, right? Well, your other characters, your ensemble, has to be able to have a reason to show up at this event and have something to say about it. Maybe they are also there to hide the bodies. Maybe they're there to expose the body. Maybe they're there because they committed the murder. Every member of your ensemble needs to be able to show up to at least some of the common events that are going to happen in your game so that you can use them. And they need to have something very distinct to do, statistically, personality-wise, and visually, audio, whatever you can come up with. It needs to be distinct from every other member of the ensemble 
in every situation where they're going to show up. So let's talk about two very common methods of creating ensembles. The first method is the everything list. The idea with this is that you have some kind of thing about your world that you find compelling. You simply make one character for every thing. So as an example of that, most of these CRPGs are actually tabletop RPGs that have been uh, agonizingly crammed into a computer for no discernible reason. But those tabletop RPGs have a bunch of classes. So what you might do is you might go through those classes and try and come up with the coolest character you can for each of those classes. It's a list of things and it is pre-made to be things that matter in the game world, right? So obviously it's a good place to start. Maybe you won't end up with every single class having a character because there are 9,864 classes and you're only planning on using six characters, but it's still a great place to start. A similar situation is if your world has a bunch of cool stuff in it, simply make a list of all of the cool stuff and have a character for each of the cool things on the list. This is Mass Effect's approach, right? So this is a very basic and stable way to do things. If you're looking at your world, chances are very high that the cool things in your world hang together. They're the things the player is going to experience, because otherwise you wouldn't have put them in your world. Even if it's subconscious, it's likely that all of the cool things in your world sort of can interweave. Like, oh, you've got psychic powers in your world. Well, that works well because there's a lot of shooting people and hacking locks and stuff like that and psychic powers would obviously apply. This is a very functional way to create your ensemble. It's a great way to do things if you are feeling completely out of your depth when it comes to creating characters that are thematically relevant. But if you're not out of your depth with that, then the other way to create an ensemble is to make them thematically relevant. Creating a thematically relevant ensemble does require you to have a theme on purpose. And that can be something that just doesn't happen for you. A lot of people don't realize that they're creating characters on theme, or they manage to even create characters that don't have a theme. But uh, if you can see your theme, then you can simply create characters that each explore a different aspect of that theme. And this works great for video games. For example, Life is Strange. In Life is Strange, you play Max, a photographer. Max is terrified of making mistakes, or more accurately, she's terrified of shit happening, right? She doesn't want things to go south because of something she did. Her powers are about that. She has the power to rewind time to undo her mistakes and to avoid bad things happening. She has the power to take photographs because, you know, that's a way to remember things, freeze things in time. But... All of the characters in the original Life is Strange have the same basic setup. They are all based around having an opinion on bad shit happening, on mistakes, on life moving forward. Chloe is all about, yeah, bad shit happens, move on. The important thing is that you're there for each other. Kate is there to say, well, bad shit can really happen, and I don't know if I'm strong enough to get through it. And, you know, Victoria is like, bad shit happens, but to other people. And David is like, bad shit never happens on my watch, even if I have to alienate absolutely everybody to make sure of it. As you move through the game, all of these characters and their takes on shit happens influence how we feel about Max's journey. And they all have their own distinct flavor because each of them has their own take on the core theme of the game. So whenever Max is being challenged about a mistake that she's about to make, we can change the texture of that exchange by swapping in different characters. So if, you know, if Max is going to make one type of mistake, we can completely change how the story feels by having Victoria there to needle us about it or Kate there to feel bad at us, or whatever else we want to make it feel like. 
This is a very powerful approach because the thematic resonance becomes clearer and clearer as you start to move through your story. Every kind of mistake that can be made, you'll find that every one of your other characters has an opinion on it because you created them with that theme. Of course, every game has its own theme. Every story has its own theme. Not every story is about this exact setup. But once you understand your theme, you can easily find a bunch of different people to have different opinions about it. And that is an excellent way to get started on creating your ensemble. This is all fairly well known. You can find very similar sort of lessons. If you look up the word ensemble, uh, you'll find a lot of people who tell you these same basic approaches. But there is one distinct thing that you're going to want to remember, and that is video games. The issue isn't, can we create an ensemble, because that we've been doing that for thousands of years. The question is, how do we create an ensemble for video games? We've already talked about the fact that video games have distinct problems with ensembles. In a linear story, you could have three characters from your ensemble all show up, and you can write every word they say, it'll be very compelling, it'll be perfect. But in a video game, the more control you give to the player, the less flexibility you have to do that. Because the player chooses who shows up. And that's a problem. The most common way to make this situation work well is to have all of the members of the ensemble lock in against the player. So if you're playing Max and her, you know, her camera, every character in the game is only here to talk to Max. They're not here to talk to each other. If Chloe and Victoria show up in the same scene, there's no frisson between them. There's no immediate interaction that comes to mind. They're built to interact with Max, not with each other. And that's just because it would make a lot more work if you actually had to support the idea that they were built to interact with each other. Now this makes ensemble creation a little bit easier because if you have a theme, then the main character is the crux of the theme, the person exploring the theme. And so each of the members of the ensemble is someone with an opinion about that theme. And so you can explore them by simply meeting the ensemble one-on-one. -on -one. But if you wanted to write characters that interact with other characters rather than the player, now you're going to run into additional problems where you're going to have to figure out the situations where they can meet and how they can interact with each other without sidelining the main character. You see how that starts to get difficult. So in most cases, if you're creating an ensemble for a video game, you're going to be focusing on having those characters interact with the main character, not with each other which is very different than creating an ensemble for a straight-ahead story like an anime or a movie. But we do have an advantage. We do have a non-restriction, an opening. Because when we are making an ensemble for a video game, we're making an ensemble that naturally stretches and squashes because video games are not locked in. We can continue being in Life is Strange to give an example of that. You spend some time in Chloe's room, and the whole point of Chloe's room is that uh, you can just stay there. Now, there, there is obviously something you're supposed to do. I think it's turn on the music or something. But you can just kind of hang out in Chloe's room all you want. There are a lot of things you can look at to learn more about Chloe. But even if you don't look at them, you can simply be in her room for as long as you want. And that is not trivial. That's something you can't do in a movie. In a movie, you can only see what's on screen for as long as they want to show it to you, and you can't look anywhere else. But in a video game, you have a lot of freedom to stretch scenes and squash scenes as a player. But this means that we also have a lot of freedom to create our ensemble as having more presence than just a character. We have to understand how our ensemble exists in the world in the shared space. Because the whole point is our ensemble shows up to the things that happen in the game, right? 
So if you're a vampire, you know, storyline, and obviously the vampires show up to the vampire events. But the other things that happen in video games are things like you go to somebody's room. Or you meet up in a class. You exist in a space together. So you can take advantage of that by having them exist in a space in a distinct way. Every one of your characters can have a distinct space that the player can visit. And you can see this in, say, you know, Mass Effect, where everybody is on the ship, but they each have their own little zone of the ship that they've customized for themselves. You go down to see the Turian, and guess what? He's calibrating those guns again. Now, that's a very minor example. Mass Effect didn't really double down on this idea, but it's something where we could easily see this getting pushed quite a bit further than it is currently pushed in games. Chloe's room is Chloe. If you want Chloe to have screen time, you can have Chloe's room have screen time. And this is the same with, say, assigning stats in an RPG. If Chloe is a warrior, you could assign her stats, you could tweak her stats, you could change her equipment around. Every time you make a distinct decision about that character's equipment, you are spending time with that character. But only if that character's equipment is distinct. As I said before, the characters have to be similar enough that they can show up to these things, but they have to be distinct enough that their presence is a distinct flavor. See how much freedom we have here? See how many axes we can work with? There is so much we can do to create really interesting ensembles for our games. And none of it requires us to tackle that problem where we have to write 30 times as much dialogue because the player chooses different characters and that sort of stuff. We don't have to tackle that. All we have to do is when we are creating our ensemble, we have to understand the kinds of things that our ensemble shows up for and their distinct takes on those things. At least, that's my opinion. Let me know what you think down below.